Uh, good morning. I'm excited to be here to tell you about the Baseline Project, and I'm honored to represent a great team here at Stanford. So the Baseline study, as Doug just said, is a collaboration between Duke, Stanford, and Google Life Sciences. And uh, we are going to develop, we hope, an integrated understanding of what it means uh, to be healthy, uh, to have disease, and to understand the transition from health to a disease state. So someone else is going to hand me a clicker that works. Oh, there it goes. All right. So uh, this baseline study is a cohort study. It's, if you will, the, the Framingham study of the 21st century. It's uh, going to be a longitudinal cohort of thousands of uh, patients and healthy people that we're going to characterize very richly using a, a number of different types of assessments that range from clinical, imaging, psychosocial, behavioral, socioeconomic, geospatial, physiometric, and molecular. Our goals are first to create a, a deep informational structure of biomedical variables, and then to populate that structure with all of the assessments that we're going to collect from thousands of, of people at various stages of health. And with that information, do the analytics so that we can develop a comprehensive understanding of health and disease state transitions. To use those, those goals, to get to those goals, we're, we're going to characterize human systems biology by measuring multiple systems simultaneously and longitudinally. We're going to use these variables to define what it means to be normal and with that information, uh, predict events. And with that understanding, develop testable hypotheses on how to predict events, uh, how to prevent events, and hopefully uh, how to treat once disease presents. We'll have two disease cohorts for practical purposes, just major disease states, cancer and coronary artery disease. And then within those cohorts, we'll have three sub-cohorts, if you will. People who are at very low risk for developing the disease. People who are at high risk but have no clinical evidence of disease. And then people who have uh, evidence of disease are at high risk for recurrence. So we will be screening people who may be eligible to participate in the study. And then once a uh, participant consents, we'll be performing uh, complete history, physical, and uh, lots of different types of tests. Participants will uh, donate biospecimens, will uh, perform genomic analyses, do imaging studies, and then there will be quarterly online assessments and then annual in-person assessments. These assessments will be every kind of omic you can think of, uh, and a microbiome will be uh, assessing immune status, using the electronic medical record to uh, dive deeply into the, the patient's history, their family history, do uh, imaging that includes echo, uh, CT in se selected patients, a whole body MRI, physical exam, and, and standard uh, blood tests. So we're going to have a lot of data, and I guess that's why I'm here, because this is the big data conference. This is my last slide. 
And this is what, uh, this is just my imagination of what this is going to look like. We're going to have four terabytes of information on every individual. That's either over the course of this longitudinal study or it's going to be per year. I, I, I'm not actually sure, but it's going to be a lot of data. And we're going to leverage the analytic capacity of our, our partner, Google, to analyze this data and make some sense out of it so we have a better understanding of human health and transition to disease. Thank you very much.